We're gonna take this in my favorite order. We're gonna do dessert first. So what we have today, we're working with some of this, uh, this beautiful uh, overripe ulu or ulu pala um, from Hawaii Ulu Co-op. It comes in a handy little 12 ounce bag. The dish that we're doing today is called Pie Piele Ulu. This is a spin off of a traditional dish. So I'm gonna add a couple of things that, you know, I thought might, might um, boost up the flavor a little bit. But of course you have to have a, have a lot of coconut milk. And this is about half a cup. You folks have the recipe. And I'm gonna add in this uh, brown butter. Make sure you get all those bits on the bottom of the, of the uh, bowl. I'm gonna add that in here. Make sure you uh, let the brown butter cool off for a little bit. You don't wanna add the hot brown butter to your, your coconut milk mix too quickly because you're, you know, you're gonna have a little explosion. So when you're browning this butter, you wanna be really careful about it. Um, you wanna make sure that you use a medium high heat and you're basically gonna be melting butter and you're gonna watch it convert from, from a yellowish color to a, a light brown color. I mean, hence the name brown butter. But the thing you want to be careful of, you want to keep that pan stirring. You want to, if you want to use a, a spoon, keep your, your, your butter moving because it'll, it'll burn. Um, you definitely don't want to let it go too long. As soon as it starts to get light brown, you want to cut that heat off because um, you know brown butter can turn to black butter in a, in a, in a second and that, that's not what we want in this case. So, so um, I'm going to go ahead and add in a touch of um, sea salt just to bring out all those flavors. The butter is salted and I'm adding just a touch of sea salt to bring out that, uh, that distinct flavor a little bit more. And, um, you know, a little bit of, uh, uh, this is homemade vanilla from my, from my mom's uh, uh, pantry. Um, you know, that always makes everything taste better, so. We're just gonna mix this up really well, like a pancake batter. You wanna get all the liquid out. It should be, the consistency of uh, like a banana bread batter. So the other thing that, that we need to take care of is uh, we need to go ahead and make our chocolate ganache filling. Um, that's something that you wanna make sure you do with ample time so that you can let it set up. Um, if you wanna do it, you know, uh, sooner than later, you wanna do it the day before, that's totally fine. But uh, if you leave it in a ice bath for roughly 20 minutes to half an hour, you should be good to go. We're gonna go ahead and open that up and we're gonna break it up into some nice even pieces. And uh, we're gonna employ our, um, our culinary friend, uh, Chef Mike, uh, Chef Microwave. And uh, it's really simple. We're just gonna pop this in a, in a microwave safe bowl for about uh, you know a minute, roughly a minute, a minute and a half till it gets nice and smooth. You don't wanna over, overcook it because it might start to separate, but um, you know, in a microwave, it's really simple. Okay, so now that our chocolate is nice and melted, um, you just wanna make sure you get all those lumps out. We're gonna combine in this uh, sweetened condensed milk. I'm actually using a coconut milk uh, version of it today, but you can use whatever you got. Um, just get it and mix it in there. And it's gonna help it to kind of stabilize. With two spoons, you're gonna just place a little a uh, dollop in the center, about the size of a teaspoon. Okay, so now I'm gonna let this ganache uh, sit in the ice bath set for maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes until it firms up a little bit so that we can handle it. Um, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and put it into the batter that we made. I've greased this, this pan with a little bit of coconut oil. Um, I think this batter is gonna make roughly about six muffins. So we're gonna fill this up about three quarters of the way. I think we'll get about six of them. And we'll just reserve a little bit for capping off the ganache. So we've had our little puolos of ganache sitting in this ice bath for roughly about 20 minutes. And it's getting kind of firm to the touch. So I'm gonna go ahead and Add this to our batter. Just place a nice little dollop of, of that ganache in there. Now obviously, if you let it sit overnight or for a little longer, it'll be easier to work with. A little less uh, gummy, but you know, it's okay to get a little chocolate in our fingers. We're gonna go ahead and uh, top it off with a little bit of batter. Mm. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this sea salt and turbinado sugar just to top it off for a little extra pop, a little bit of paakai and sugar. So we're gonna put this in the oven, uh, 375 for about half an hour. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our savory dish uh, and it is going to be uh, Hawaii Ulu Cooperative uh, Taro and corned beef hash. There's something that is really important to know about taro. I mean, first of all, you know, it's, it's very significant to us, significant to us as Hawaiians. We look at it as our ancestor, Halo and Nakalau Kapalili. Um, you know, taro comes in many different varieties in Hawaii. Um, you know, somewhere over, somewhere like 300 varieties of taro. Typically, uh, taro wouldn't be used in a dish as a, as, a, as a side dish or as an ingredient. It would be really the focal point of the meal. Generally, it's gonna be eaten uh, steamed and cooked like this as what we call kalopa'a, or it'll be pounded into uh, a mash called poi, uh, pa'iai or poi. Um, you know, I really think that it's a great idea for us to take a moment to look into, you know, all the different facets of taro. So many different things to know um, between varieties. You can get different flavor profiles, you can get different colors, you can get different textures even of um, in, your, in your dish um, just by changing the variety of taro. Such a treasured uh, ingredient, I mean really our staple food in Hawaii. I know that this taro is um, a, a lehua, lehua variety um, that is procured by Hawaii Ulu Co-op. Um, you know, again, uh, one of one of uh, uh, my longtime mentors. Uh, you know, one of the biggest questions that were posed to him at many times was, you know, Uncle Jerry, uh, what's your favorite taro? And his answer would always be the taro that's in front of me on my dinner table. And here we have some beautiful lehua, thanks to Hawaii Ulu Co-op, um, and we're gonna make a simple hash. Um, you know, this is a, a dish that I grew up eating. You know, not, not this version, but you know, uh, we all grew up eating hash as a, as a kid in Hawaii. Kalau's gonna be working on the corned beef. You know, one thing about the corned beef is important. I would suggest that it, you cut it in the, in, the, in the correct fashion. You know, you see the, the grain, the grains running the long ways. You wanna cut it against the grains and you know, it's gonna fall apart into a nice uh, crumble. So we, he's gonna go ahead and work on that and we're gonna start working on the other mise en place here. So the taro is just gonna be real simple. I mean, like I said, it's already cooked, cleaned. They, they took all the work out of it for you. It's gonna cut it in little half inch cubes. Doesn't have to be anything, you know, super crazy. You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and dump it out. Of course, uh, I, I defrosted this, this taro and it's, uh, you know, at a, at a good temperature to cook. We keep it roughly about the same size so that we have a nice uniform, uniform cooking. But like us as people, a little bit of different size, you know, a little bit of different shape, a little bit of different color and flavor. And it makes, it, makes us what we are. So I think that, uh, you know, we don't have to knock ourselves out to make it all perfect. But remembering that we're honoring this, this taro as our kupuna. So we always cook with, with, with love and, and aloha and we put all our good energy into this, especially when we're around our kupuna haloa. So, so I got it all nice and cubed up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and combine this in here and Kala's gonna start adding in his corned beef and his uh, minced garlic. And in the meantime, I'll be working on some onions. It's a little, a little simple dice here. Careful, use a sharp knife. And I'm just gonna give it a little, oops, sorry. Take your time. And we're gonna, it doesn't have to be too fine, you know. It's gonna melt down and get a nice caramelization in there. So I use a half an onion, and while we're working on onions, I'm gonna go ahead and slice the rest of this one for our, uh, for our tomato radish that we're gonna go ahead and add on to this. With these green onions or scallions, I'm gonna give it a, just to give a little color. I'm gonna put that all in there. 
For me, growing up um, with corned beef hash, it was pretty traditional for us to have ketchup on it. And, uh, you know, I'm not a huge ketchup fan, but I, 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 I do like it on my hash. So I thought I would um, do a little, a, a little relish that would kind of be similar to a ketchup. But, um, so I got some heirloom tomatoes and I'm gonna show you guys a little trick um, how, to, how to cut these guys pretty quick and easy. I'm gonna lay them into this uh, little uh, deli lid. Okay, so we're gonna cap that up there. So I'll give it a little pressure on it using a serrated knife. It helps to use a serrated knife unless you get a really sharp knife, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it up like that. It's good to go. All right. So this is gonna be our, our tomato relish. That, the bit of the uh, sliced onions. And the minced garlic. And the minced garlic. Kala is mixing up our hash. And uh, same with the relish. I'm gonna just give it a quick toss and we're gonna head over to the stove. You know, we wanna get it in a nice hot pan. Because of course, like I said, the uh, the taro is already cooked, so is the corned beef. The onions only require a short bit of, of cooking, so we're gonna just put it in there long enough to get the onion reduced down a bit and uh, get a nice little crust on our corned beef and our arrow. Okay, so this tomato radish, we use some heirloom tomatoes and uh, some slivered onions and. We gave it a nice hot saute with a little bit of brown sugar, and uh, we deglazed it with some apple cider vinegar, some nice uh, minced garlic in there, and gave it like a, a sweet tangy kind of flavor. And that's uh, gonna add a little bit of color and some acidity to this uh, hash dish. Saute this relish until it's a little charred and uh, reduced down just a little bit, uh, sort of the consistency of like a salsa. Okay, so this is our, uh, our Hawaii Ulu Co-op uh, taro and uh, Kaunamano Farms corned beef hash. Um, nice and hot, ready to go. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of this, this tomato relish that uh, we sauteed up. Give it some color, acidity, and a little bit of uh, sweetness. Oh, got one on the ground there. And we're gonna just garnish it with a nice little a little bit of uh, slivered scallion, just for fun. Give it some color pop, and that's our dish. Gonna move right into dessert. Now that's what we've all been waiting for. Um, so this is our uh, uh, Baker's Ripe Ulu PLA Molten Chocolate Dish. I'm gonna put this right in the corner over here. Give you a little peek at this this uh, ganache. Ooh, look at that, and it's nice and gooey in there in that center. And look at that. Tell me you don't want to get a bite of that right there. Okay, well, thanks again for joining us and cooking along with us today. Uh, once again, I'm uh, Keloha Domingo. And I'm Kala Domingo. Uh, we're Nui Keloha, and uh, the moment we've been waiting for. We're gonna eat. So let's try this. Go ahead, son. Get a good bite here. I'm gonna get the dessert. Yeah. That chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, the relish is a nice touch. Mm. It does kind of remind me of ketchup, but way better. Chocolate. Nothing wrong with chocolate. Mm-hmm. <laughs>